I am in love with him, Judith, said Olga. When I look into his eyes, I know we are meant to be together. First of all, said Judith, Gordon only has one eye, and you can't fall in love with him. He is a zombie. Also, I don't think his penis is attached to him anymore. As long as he has a heart, he can still love me, Olga whispered to herself. Oh man, my writing is so good. No, 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 said Judith. He can't love you. He's going to want to eat you. Well, I certainly hope so, Olga smiled. Judith sighed. You're desperate and weird, Olga. I don't think I should hang around you anymore. Why don't you shut up your face? Olga stepped forth and in her fit of rage punched Judith's breast. Ouch, said Judith. I didn't like that. Oh, hello. I didn't see you. I was just working on my novel. It's sure to be a bestseller. I was wondering... I was... wondering... Since you're just going to stand there with your mouth open, would you like to join me for my next session? Yes? Just let me pull up my pants and we'll get started. <laughs> Greetings to all. I am the therapist. Your therapist. And on this day's session, we discuss why shock value is indeed effective and valuable, as it is a risk taken by the writer, the filmmaker, the creator, a gamble, a very delicate thing to handle. Like if I were to pull out a severed arm and began gorging on it like a wild animal, then no doubt this video would garner as much views as... Gangnam Style? Or... Baby Shark? Do 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 do. What's that? I'm talking millions, possibly billions of views. Uh, but on the downside, society would despise me. Even more so, if I sat here eating somebody's arm. Because cannibalism is like wrong or something. Let us begin. Some of the most renowned writers today have this need to be raw, vulgar, and explicit. There's George R. R. Martin's widely popular A Song of Ice and Fire, which is filled with gruesome deaths, incest, and rape. In Stephen King novels, you'll find some of the most creatively uncomfortable sex scenes. And anything written by Quentin Tarantino is sure to have blood and violence and loads of shock value. Why do these brilliant writers use this tool so often? Even J.K. Rowling likes to insert the element of shock into the Harry Potter series. Dumbledore gay? Wow, I didn't know that. Hermione was actually black? Some evidence says shows she wasn't, but yeah, okay. I didn't know that either. And apparently Dobie was a sex slave. Then J.K. Rowling got weirder and weirder on Twitter, and then she descended into madness. And in one of the Harry Potter movies, that horny ghost, Moaning Myrtle, tries to touch Harry's penis. Shocking. That is what happened. 
That's how the therapist remembers it. She tried to assault him. So, I, uh... Why do the most talented writers use shock value? Because, like I had mentioned, it's effective. I guess you can say it's a swift way of creating a defining moment. Because when a moment goes into extremes, it sinks into us better. And it sometimes amplifies the point one is trying to get across. It makes the story memorable because it managed to grab your full attention in that brief scene. A Song of Ice and Fire Or Game of Thrones Undoubtedly one of the best shows ever created, so of course I'd mention this series. Billions of people have also read the novels, and another few million have attempted to read the novels before they lost focus and started doing something else. Could this show, or the books, have worked without the controversial parts? For anyone who's read it, what happens early on? What happens at the end of the show's first episode? Jamie Lannister and his twin sister, his twin sister, Cersei, are having sex in the tower. And then Bran Stark, who's about seven in the books, I believe, peeks into the room and is like, Hey, why is he hurting her butt? Then Jamie pushes Bran, the seven-year-old, out of the window of that very tall tower. The kid could have died. We are shocked. And we laugh when we first see this scene because we could all relate to wanting to throw a child out of the window. Right? The whole time I was thinking this fantasy book was going to be like The Hobbit or whatever. But this wasn't like The Hobbit at all. This... What? What is this? Ew. You would think the incest and attempted child murder would repel an audience. But it actually attracted an audience. Made this audience... Loyal, even. That was likely the scene that got people invested in Game of Thrones. Why? Something gross and heinous as incest and child murder would scare you away. You seem to have liked it. And wanted more of it. Why did people react so favorably to something so nasty and ugly, so unpleasant? Well, when you came across that infamous tower scene, you immediately learned that there wouldn't be any restrictions, and that the most horrible things, the worst things, can happen or have happened to the characters in the story. And that makes you, the reader, the viewer, genuinely afraid. It's the dread and danger George R. R. Martin wants you to experience. Ironically, it proves he cares how you feel by making you feel bad. Despite an outcome in a story being unfavorable, an audience can forgive and appreciate something they sense was well thought out. It's because that risk taken can make or break, turn an audience off or on, it does take skill, intelligence, and intuition to pull off. And I'll go as far as to say it takes knowing and understanding human nature and human emotion. I mean, how does a stand-up comedian get a crowd to laugh at offensive and controversial topics? It's all about skillful writing and execution, a very admirable talent one can possess. What's an example of poorly executed shock value? This one is easy. In The Walking Dead, who is or was your favorite character? I bet it was Glenn. The showrunners have taken a lot of risk throughout the seasons, and that could have been what contributed to the show's success, but it got to the point where they seemed to toy with their audience rather than nurture the overall story. Most viewers would understand the importance of eventually killing off Glenn, but in this case it was mishandled. Many people were turned off, and rightfully so. It seemed the showrunners got too arrogant and believed they were pushing the envelope, because that was far from good storytelling that would fill you with emotion. That season 7 opener was horribly and carelessly done. It was a risk, it got so much attention and a reaction, but it didn't pay off. That one scene cost the show a large number of viewers, and ratings have only just been falling ever since then. Remember that shock value is a risky thing to pull off, 
and it can go way too far if not handled with care. As a storyteller, do you want to work to bring out the genuine emotions of your audience, or do you just want to pull a cheap stunt for attention? What was the difference between the death of Ned Stark and the death of Glenry? Both were beloved characters, killed by detestable villains in sickening fashions. Why did one risk work while the other didn't? The therapist will explain it to you. It was in Ned's final moments, final seconds really. Before the sword comes down, you watch him bow his head, close his eyes, and whisper his prayers to his gods. It says a lot in those few seconds. Ned doesn't go out screaming, crying, or begging. Instead, you see a man unafraid of death. A man who willingly surrenders. Being that he had been prepared for death since his war days. He accepts his fate. As the viewers watch in horror, a part of them accepts the death with him. The few seconds of Ned displaying his acceptance kind of softens the blow in a sense. Compare that to Glenn's final moments, because that stupid Negan scene is so sickening and agitating, you just want to pull yourself out from the immersion, out of the experience this fiction piece is providing you. Keep in mind that shock value doesn't always have to be graphic or absurd. <coughs> it can come in the form of a plot twist or a revelation, anything that creates an instant reaction. But for this session, we'll continue to focus on the more common technique of evoking disgust and unease. The Exorcist. An exhibition of shock value done correctly. Often, the movie keeps you in a confined setting within this house, mainly Regan's bedroom where she's bedridden and beginning to transform. They didn't have to take you to a gothic mansion or a dark forest or some creepy cemetery. Much of the horror comes from watching a young girl suffer by the hands of something perverse and vile and invisible. One of the first shocking moments is when Regan urinates on the floor in front of her mother's house guests. Regan's a normal 12 year old. The film doesn't rely much on setting or so much on characters either. Instead relies heavily on the shocking scenes, presenting them in a way that is realistic rather than theatrical. The inhuman head turning, the iconic projectile vomiting, that bizarre spider crawl thing she does down the stairs, and that scene where she's poking herself with a crucifix. There's also the extreme blasphemies from the Captain Howdy demon, and the foul nasty words spewing out of the possessed child's mouth. Through these scenes, you can feel the hatred and wrath in this Pazuzu entity. It convinced you there was real evil in this story, and that this innocent girl was being victimized by it. The fact that this film wasn't afraid to go this far is what made it terrifying. The shock value in The Exorcist was all well-timed and well-suited for this tale that portrayed evil as this belligerent and ruthless force. So many times the scares pulled you into the emotional state of terror. When we are emotional, we become illogical. And when we are illogical towards the world of fiction, that means we are fully immersed. When shock value is done right, it'll give you so much in a short period of time. In three minutes of a movie, or in the single page of a novel. However long it takes to jolt you out of boredom. What can we learn from the art of shock value? It doesn't mean be provocative or psychotic. Using the element of shock can either make you an attention whore or make you a legend. We can learn to be more unpredictable, surprise even ourselves. Think outside the box, take the big risks, but you have to be smart about it. And at the same time, be a little stupid. Take that leap no one else is willing to take and no doubt they'll all remember you. Make your presence known. You have one life. Make an impact.